I would like for you to literally make a list of your three and your 12 and your 70 and your crowd. And ask yourself, how much time am I investing in them? How much time am I spending with them? What am I doing with them? Because your churches will not grow from here. They will grow from here. Churches don't grow on Sunday. They grow Monday through Friday. I want to say that again. Churches do not grow on Sunday. That's the crowd. Churches grow Monday through Friday. Let me say it another way. Your Sunday services are the showroom. Monday through Friday is the factory. If the factory is not working, the showroom can be shiny but empty. We get all excited about the showroom. So I've been in church all my life. I told you I've been in spirit-filled church all my life. I started talking in tongues at the age of eight. People will come to church, they will shout, they will dance, they'll spin around, they will run, they'll throw babies. But you can get nothing out of them. Because they just come for the experience. Experience based people don't grow a church. Because one Sunday they feel, whoo, this was so good. Another Sunday I'm, I'm not getting fed. Is that not true? Because we have not focused on, let me, let me explain to you this way. So, so when Rachel, my first daughter, was born, uh, she would sit at our table on a, in a high chair, just like your babies did, and she would open her mouth, ah, and I'd put some food in the mouth. Ah, some more food in her mouth. Ah, some more food in her mouth. That's when she was a baby. What would happen at the age of 36? She sits at the table and goes, ah. <laughs> That's right. Pastor told us right. Bam. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree that a 36-year-old girl my, still my daughter, I love her as much as I loved her then, but she goes and goes, ah, I'm going to start worrying about her. Some, how many of you would agree something is wrong? You have people sitting in your church who've been saved for 36 years. Ah, every Sunday. They want you to figure it out. Because that's what we've been doing. We just keep giving them food. We keep processing it. We, we keep preparing for it because we keep pandering to the crowd. But this is where your growth is going to come from. I promise you that. Jesus knew that. Jesus knew if I focused here, this will grow. But if I focused here, they will go away. When your church is in trouble, you're going through a tough time, the first group of people who are going to leave your church. Listen, I've been doing what I do for almost 30 years. I've been around many church wrecks. I've been at many church fires where all kinds of stuff happened. And I'm here to tell you, that the first group of people who leave your church are the people who are business people, people white collar, professionals with, thank you. Is that not true? Again, the words of Jesus are true. The poor you'll always have with you. <laughs> They're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. Yeah, I've been called into some major, where Pastor Tola knows this. Uh, I've been called into some major churches where scandals took place, major scandals. 
First thing happens in the middle of the, the first thing happens is the people who have resources and white collar professionals gone. And you all have stories to tell like that too. And that was because it was crowd-based. Crowd-based church. I've been around a lot. Crowd, let me tell you what a crowd-based church is. A crowd-based church is when the pastor is not there, the attendance goes down. That's a crowd-based church. A leadership-based church knows Jesus is still going to be there. They love the pastor, they honor the pastor, they want the pastor to be there, but if the pastor happens to be out of the country, pastor happens to be traveling, pastor happens to be sick, they're still going to show up. These people are trying to find out, who's preaching today? <laughs> so we got a little smarter, we got a little smarter, we just don't tell people now. But if you have three services... The first service people are putting on Facebook, pastor's not here. <laughs> the other services, they go visiting somewhere else. That's the world we are living in. Am I, am I making this up? Is it not true? And that is because we have built a crowd-based church not a leadership discipleship based church. I can tell the strength of a church by what happens when the pastor is not there. So who are your three? Who are your 12? Who are your 70? Who's the crowd? Once you know this, then you won't give doing people thinking work, organizing people thinking work, you won't give thinking people doing work, you will give them what is, what they do. So earlier on when I was in the session uh, with Pastor First Samuel, uh, and uh, he was talking about your thoughts will lead you, you remember that? And I've got a good briefing on what he, uh, Brother Femi told me everything he talked about last night because I asked him on the way from the airport, what did Pastor uh, Sam talk about? And so Brother Femi almost memorized the whole thing, gave me the whole thing, he even gave me the altar call. So uh, <laughs> right in the, in the car, you know. So, so I know he talked about thinking. So I'm going to give you the seven steps to your destiny and come back and talk to you about thinking. You ready? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Seven steps to your destiny. Here are the, here are the seven words. The first word is your thoughts, how you think. Your thoughts, how you think. Number two, words. Number three, decisions. Number four, actions. Number five, habits. Habits. I know I'm saying it my Indian way, so you all say it any way you want to say it. <laughs> your habits, like you brush your teeth, that's a habit. How would you say it? Habits, okay. I'll say it your way. There are more of you than me. Habits. So can I tell you a story on the side? So I came to America in 1973. My name is not Chand. My name is Chand. Chand. Like that's the pronunciation of my name, Chand. So I came to America and I started introducing myself. Hi, my name is Samuel Chan, Ch Chand. No, there's a Chand. I said, no, no, Chand. <laughs> Chand. Chand. No, no, no. Chand. No, no, Chan. <laughs> so about three days of that, I recognized there's more of them <laughs> than me. So I just changed my name. Now I'm Chan. <laughs> so there's more of you. <laughs> so say habits again. Habits, habits, habits. Okay, I'll remember that habits, habits. Am I saying it right now? Habits. Uh, yeah. 
you know the crazy part is I go home to India now and I introduce myself. Hi, my name is Sam Chand. Chand? Is <laughs> Chand. No, Chand. <laughs> so I'm, having, I'm arguing with them because I've lived here 45 years now, you know. So anyways, habits. You do your habits right enough. <laughs> yes. Uh, you're gonna, this is crazy, isn't it? We are in Texas and Indian talking to Nigeria. That's uh, messed up. We're, messed up. That's, we're totally, totally messed up. This hotel will never be the same again. I noticed those girls in the morning there. I mean, they were like, okay, we got some good people here. That lead you into your, no, word number six is your character, your character. See, there you go. Car, how do you say that? Car. Yeah, that's the word that I'm looking for. <laughs> you all say it. Yeah, character. And finally, number seven is your destiny. Your destiny. Your destiny. This is so much fun. You know, people who don't travel really don't understand what just happened. This is so much fun. All right. So the first word is your thoughts. I'm going to come back to that. But once you think something, you say words to yourself. There are words that bounce around in your head. I'll say this, then he'll say that. Then I'll say this, then he'll say that. The most important conversations that you're going to have with yourself, they'll never come out of your mind. They'll never come out of your brain. But if you... Say those words, then you're going to end up making, number three is what? Some decisions. And when you make decisions, that leads you to actions. Now, let me stop over there and ask you. Have you ever had somebody who has come and asked you for advice, and you gave them advice, but they don't do it? Two weeks later, they come back with the same problem, right? You give them same advice. They still don't do it. Can I tell you why that doesn't happen? Because they're asking you question number four. They're asking you a question, action question. They're asking you, what should I do? But there are three questions before that. The first one is, what are you thinking? Second is, what are you saying? Number three is, what are you deciding and then you come to actions so they're asking you a uh, step number four so if I was on the on the floor level here if this is my thoughts and this is my uh, words and this is my decisions and this is my actions but they are here and they're asking you this question I'm not gonna try it don't worry uh, I used to be foolish, but I'm wiser now. <laughs> I'm wiser now. <laughs> but if, but they're asking you step number four. Are you, are you following me? So your first question should be, what do you think? Have you ever looked at somebody and said, what were they th thinking? You know, can I tell you something? They were not thinking. And then you have to ask them, so what do you say to yourself? What's the self-talk that goes on in your mind? Nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. I don't have enough money. I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, young. I'm not old enough. I'm not young. And I don't have the right resources. If I was in the right city, my church would be big too. What are you saying to yourself? And then next step is what? What are your decisions? And finally, what is your actions? But you keep doing the actions long enough and that brings you to your, and they become part of your. Okay. Do you know anybody who is habitually late? I'm talking about, it's not like once in a while that can be traffic, you know? I mean, I, mean, I live in Atlanta, lots of bad traffic. You know, if you live in Baltimore, could be a tunnel, could be a bridge. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. But these people are always late. So if the bus is going to leave the church parking 
for a trip at nine o'clock. Bus is going to leave at nine o'clock. What time do you tell them to be there? Don't do that anymore. Stop feeding the monster. Because now it has become part of their character. They, because people who keep other people waiting have no respect for other people's time. Because when you value something, you're on time. Okay, give you an example. I said to you, meet me in the parking lot of this hotel tomorrow morning at three o'clock in the morning. And I'll give you a couple bucks. Mm, you're gonna turn over and say, nah, I don't think so. I said to you, meet me in the parking lot three o'clock in the morning, I'll give you a million dollars in cash. What time are you gonna be there? <laughs> yeah, you're gonna you're gonna park your you're gonna be in a tent, you're gonna get a room. All right. Work with me now. Did anything change about the location? Did anything change about the time? Did anything change about the people involved? What changed? When people don't value you, they devalue you. So you see how things become part of your character. And then you walk into your destiny. But I have time to just talk to you about the first one, which is your thoughts. Everything began with a thought. The Bible tells us what? As a man. So I know Pastor uh, Sam talked about that last night. He also emphasized that today. Everything begins with a thought. The table you're sitting at began with a thought. The chairs you're sitting at began with a thought. Uh, the clothes you're wearing began with a thought. Your hairstyle began with a thought. Your lack of hairstyle began with a thought. <laughs> your being here began, everything began with a thought. Uh, there are brochures and pamphlets uh, sitting on your table there. It began with a thought. There are some reserved signs on some tables. Began with a thought. There's a whatever that is in the middle of the table with water and something floating in it. Uh, that began. Are you following me? Be everything began with a thought. So Either you will lead your thoughts or your thoughts will lead you. So I'm going to give you some thoughts to think about. You ready? The first thought is, who am I? Who am I? The question of security. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Question of security. I want you to know I, I wrestle with this. I wrestle with this. I wrestle with this. Because through God's good graces and goodness, I get to be on major platforms with some amazing speakers. 